One day while wandering the wasteland south of Old Olney and north of Canterbury Commons, we stumble upon yet another blasted out ruin. But this one has signs of habitation. We see strings of lights strung up nearby, and for once it doesn't look like raiders live here. We don't see any signs of murder or violence. We have discovered the Temple of the Union. We find the entrance to this temple on the western side of the building. We see the door is blocked off with a gate and guarded by a woman standing in a window above it. As we creep forward... What's your business, stranger? My mistake. I'll be going. Good idea. I wanted to know what you're hiding in there. Now open the damn door. That's some tough talk, stranger. You should clear out of here before I'm forced to make you. I'm just looking for a place to rest and maybe to do some trading. Hannibal says I gotta let folks like you in, but that don't mean I have to like it. Keep your hands in sight and don't make any sudden moves. I'm coming down to open the gate. With that, she runs from the window and apparently comes downstairs. But, uh, we wait here for a bit and no one comes. Uh, we see a big bell out front. Ring me, says the sign. But, uh, we don't hear anything upon ringing it. There's a guy in there doing something. We could pick this thing. It's a very hard lock, but I get the impression we'd probably piss off everyone inside if we did. Come on, hello? Let me in. I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah, well, you're taking your good sweet time with it, aren't you? I don't got all day to wait, lady. Well, you sound farther away now. What, did you go back upstairs? How can you hear this anyway? I don't even hear the doorbell. I'm coming, I'm coming. Oh, there she is. Goodness. Hannibal is upstairs somewhere. I'm locking the door behind you, so don't try anything. I'm watching you. Where's the hospitality? Watch your step. Oh. Looks like we're locked in now. You know your way around. Just try and stay out of trouble. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for that, lady. Oh, oh, this is a magic gate now. We're just dealing with the magic gate. Fine. You ain't supposed to be looking at me to say nothing of talking to me. Now beat it. Hannibal is waiting for you. Well, it looks like in order to leave via this magic gate, we've got to talk with a guy named Hannibal. We see a man against the northern wall working on something... Getting closer. What is this? Looks like a big slab of marble. He's drawing on it or carving into it, it looks like. The only legible words we see read Temple of the Union. But they seem offset, almost as if they're part of a larger inscription. An inscription this man is trying to restore. Go talk to Hannibal, stranger. Don't you be stopping here, lady. You got to talk to Hannibal first. But he doesn't want to talk with us. We see buckets on the ground. They're probably for milking this nearby Brahmin we find in the corner. There's a bed here and it's unowned. We could rest up if we wanted to, but we'd be sleeping by two dumpsters. Then in the southeastern corner of the bottom floor, we find a door to Caleb's home. Caleb's home is its own interior cell? Heading inside. Oh, it's a bathroom. What, they put Caleb in the bathroom? What did he do? Well, he's got his own bed in here. We see a pre-war book lying on the bed and a teddy bear nearby, but they're both marked as owned. I don't really know if I want to steal from these guys yet. There's also some buff out in a bin by the toilet and a first aid kit above it. Heading back outside, we can move across the hall. Here we find some pre-war cubicles and a woman, Alejandra Torres. Go away. Hannibal is waiting for you. Jeez, everyone's so friendly here. The desks in these pre-war cubicles are still here, but we don't find much loot. So, heading up the stairs, we arrive on floor two. We see Simone wandering around, and then standing by a dismembered marble head, we find Hannibal Hamlin. Ah, a visitor. Welcome to the Temple of the Union. I'm not going to ask you who you are. Uh, for the moment, I don't care. We are all escaped slaves. I need your solemn promise not to betray us to Paradise Falls or the slavers. Until I get that, you cannot leave here. So, do I have your word? Uh, I'll need to think about that. When you are ready, let me know. Until then, you are free to wander our home. However, we cannot allow you to leave. 
Let me go, or I swear to God, I'll rip your doggone throat out. I don't want to get in a fight with you, but I would rather die than risk the slavers finding us. Is a simple promise so much to ask? You want me to protect escaped slaves? You've got to be kidding. You're worth money to me. You leave me no choice. And with that, he attacks! Over here! But by doing that, we lose a bunch of karma, and we've probably locked ourselves out of a pretty cool quest, so... Instead of just straight up murdering these guys, we can say, Look, if I'd have known this before, I wouldn't have even come in. Let me go. We can't risk that. Just as we couldn't risk telling you who we were before letting you in. All I need is your word. Will you guard our secret? This leaves us with one remaining option. To say, I solemnly swear to protect the Temple of the Union. Welcome, sister, to the Temple of the Union. Our home is your home. Your past is your own affair so long as you serve our common good. As a symbol of our trust, here is a key to the gate. So you used to be a slave? For 23 years I was a slave. Ever since I was 14. Six years ago I managed to escape from my master. He's been hunting me ever since. When I found the head of Lincoln here, I knew it was a sign for me to help other slaves to escape. I founded the Temple of the Union as a safe haven for runaway slaves everywhere. What is that stone head? That's Abraham Lincoln, the great emancipator. We don't know how it came to be here, but it's fitting, don't you think? What are a bunch of escaped slaves doing holed up in here? We are trying to make a safe haven for all runaway slaves. We give food and supplies to any that find us and help them on their way. Why don't you just kill them and take all their stuff? Everyone else does. They come here with nothing but their dignity. Would you have me take that from them, too? We will rise above our base instincts and help our fellow man. Why don't you let them stay here? We don't have enough room. There's not enough water or food here. But I have a plan. A plan to take over a place that will be a shining beacon of hope for all slaves. Is this going to be a long story? Because I've got things to do. I shouldn't have expected anyone that hasn't been a slave to give a damn. Wouldn't a beacon to the slaves just attract slavers? You make jokes when the lives and freedom of our fellow men are at stake. I tell you, I know a place that we can defend from the slavers. Sounds dangerous. Where is this place? I want to move all my people to the memorial site for the great Abraham Lincoln, but I need to know if it's safe. I've heard rumors of super mutants infesting that area, though. We need to send someone to check that out first. Yeah, that's a problem. Well, I'd better be going. So you are a coward. I thought so. That's a really stupid idea. You wouldn't say that if you spent even a single night in shackles. I'm done trying to justify my plan to you. If you don't want to help us, just say so. You know, I could get rid of the super mutants, if there are any. I was hoping you would help us. The memorial is easy to find. Good luck. One other thing. Talk to Caleb. He'll need your help. We can't leave unless he's ready, too. Well, what is it that Caleb needs? He was a stonemason. It will fall to him to restore the memorial as best he can. He's been pestering me for weeks now to get him some things he needs. I don't have time to deal with him right now. Hey, remind me, what is it again with that stone head? Haven't you been listening? That's Abraham Lincoln, the great emancipator. Thank you, Hannibal. I'd better get going. May the spirit of the great Lincoln protect you. So, we need to clear this Lincoln Memorial of all super mutants. And we've got to check in with Caleb, the stonemason. Okay. But it's just then, the Temple of the Union gets attacked. Talon Company. They're here to capture the slaves. Now, this can be an infuriating battle. If we use area of effect damage, like a big old fat man, we risk injuring the runaway slaves. And that's because the first thing these brilliant slaves do when attacked by Talon Company is open the gate and run out there to meet them in combat. You know, instead of staying on this side of the gate where it's safer. So by using the fat man, I inadvertently killed some of the slaves and angered everybody fell in the quest. But if we don't kill the Talon Company fast enough, there's a real danger that Talon Company will kill either Hannibal or Caleb. And if either of them die, we fail the quest. So using a weapon with low AP, we can make good use of vats to take them out as fast as possible.
your face out of those books and learn how to shoot before someone puts a collar back on you. I hate guns. Besides, the pen is mightier than the sword. Or the assault rifle. Pen is mightier than the assault rifle. <laughs> well, she's not gonna last very long in this wasteland. With Talon Company dead, we can explore this top floor. The containers up here are not set to own, so we can loot them without fear of turning everybody hostile. We find a stack of 75 bottle caps in one of the cabinets. And against the southern wall, we find an average locked storeroom door. Making sure everybody's gone and we're hidden, we can pick this sucker. We arrive in an interior cell. Inside, we find a small store of goods. Nothing terribly exciting. A little bit of ammunition, a bunch of boxed foods, and a tiny bit of scrap. There are two teddy bears in one bin that we could steal for little Marie, but I don't think I want to steal from escaped slaves. And we find a first aid kit. And that's about it. Heading back out, we see two doors against the northern wall. The first leads to Simone's house. But again, everything in here is set to owned. We find some mentats in a box at the bottom of the shelf, along with a stack of darts, more boxed foods, some radex, some billiard balls in a frying pan on one shelf, and a bunch of scrap. Heading out of Simone's house, we can go into the final door, which is Hamlin's home. There are two beds in here. Wonder who he bunks with. On the wall, we see a wonderful pre-war poster. Oh my, danger, says the turtle. Kids, learn to find shelter. Because a tortoise shell will totally protect you from a bomb. This is a reference to the real world Bert the Turtle duck and cover propaganda posters used during the Cold War. His room isn't that interesting. Mentats in one box and just a bunch of scrap. Heading out, we can talk with the cast of characters here. First, we find Bill Seward. My name is Bill. Bill Seward, if you please, ma'am. What's that stone head? And for some reason, his voiced dialogue was muted in my game. So I'll just read it. That's Lincoln, ma'am. Hannibal found it. He wants to put it back, ma'am. I don't really understand why. That was my sickly old man voice. So, Bill, you used to be a slave? Oh, yes. All my life. One day, I killed the master's little girl. It was an accident, I swear. I... I ran away. They would never have believed me. Hannibal found me. I would never have made it without him. What? He killed a little girl? Oh. I'm sure it was an accident. Well, what do you do here, Bill? A bit of this and a bit of that. Whatever Mr. Hannibal needs. I look after the animals, cook our meals, clean up, things like that. Huh. That sounds an awful lot like, uh, what a slave would do. Well, I've heard enough. Yes, ma'am. Interesting guy. Moving on, we can talk with Caleb Smith. You're new. I'm Caleb. If you're going to be staying a while, I could use some help. Hannibal says you need something. Hannibal told you about Lincoln's memorial? Well, he doesn't just want to live there. He also wants to restore it. Make it so people tell stories about it and the word can get to the slaves. But I can't restore something if I don't know what it looked like. I need a drawing, a photograph of it. Where the hell am I supposed to get a picture of the memorial? Our ancestors honored Lincoln's life with a display in the Museum of History. I'm hoping that a picture of the memorial still survives in there. I bet you know where I can find one. Yes. There might be one in the Museum of History. Alejandra says they have a special exhibit all about Lincoln. What is that stone head? The stone head is from the statue of Abraham Lincoln. Hannibal wants me to reattach it to the statue in the memorial. So you used to be a slave? Long time ago. Eight years, I think. Three of us escaped during the night. They caught Lysel and John. I made it into the wasteland. Raiders took me in at first. When I heard about this place, I knew I had to come here. What do you do here? My former master trained me in masonry. I fix things. Someday I hope to reattach Lincoln's head to the statue in the memorial. I have to go now. Okay. Then we can talk with our pen is mightier than the assault rifle lady. This is Alejandra Torres. Hannibal says you're on our side. My name is Alejandra. What is that stone head? He is the great emancipator. He freed all the slaves over a hundred years before the bombs dropped. Hannibal wants to make his memorial a symbol of hope and freedom for all slaves. So, you used to be a slave? Yes, for four years. 
I was young and pretty. I don't need to tell you what my duties were. He liked me enough to educate me. I learned reading, history, math, and even some science. When my master married, his wife insisted I get sold. Hannibal bought me and freed me. What do you do here? I'm an historian. I also tinker with pre-war machines. My dream is to build a shrine to the great Abraham Lincoln. Thanks. Bye. Take care of yourself. Then we can talk with Simone, the lady who so warmly greeted us upon arrival. You don't look like much, stranger. Bet you run from rad roaches. I'm Simone Cameron. Don't f with me. Hannibal says I can't shoot you, but I ain't trusting you with a gun to my back. What is that stone head? Goddamn rookie. That's Lincoln. He freed some slaves a long time ago. If you want to know more, come listen to Hannibal give his speech. He does it right after the noon meal. So you used to be a slave? Not for long. Me and my Merc crew were captured by slavers. Seven months I groveled and obeyed like a good lapdog. When I saw my chance, I took it. I had nowhere else to go. Hannibal took me in. He never cared about my past. What do you do here? I shoot nosy people. What the hell do you think I do? I protect this place. Okay, I gotta go now. Don't let me stop you. My, my, isn't she a charmer? It's always former mercenaries that have the most pleasant personalities. But look at this, we find a dog. And his name is Fourscore, that's fitting. We can take a closer look at that stone head, and sure enough, it is that of Lincoln. And just about then, as it's approaching noontime, Hannibal comes down to give the former slaves a rallying speech. Let me tell you the story of Abraham Lincoln. He was born a Tucky Tearsman. The truth of this mysterious title has been lost, well, but we know it was a great honor. Itself. As a child, he could not bear to see any animal chained or imprisoned. He was even known to set free the family Brahmin on occasion. As a youth, Abraham Lincoln fought raiders in the War of the Black Hawks. When the war ended, he settled down to rule the Lenoi, a small tribe of free men. He grew so famous that one day he was made president. He ruled over all the land. When he declared that all slaves must be freed, the slavers rebelled against his rule. They fought a great war, which Lincoln won. When he came to free the slaves, an assassin of the slavers struck him down. In the confusion, a few of the slavers escaped. Lincoln's generals hunted them, but could not find them. The bombs ended the era of Lincoln, but we will resurrect his voice. We will restore the greatness of his vision, where all men are created equal and all men can live free. We are grateful for any help you can give us. Tucky Tearsman? The Lenoy? Well, 200 years has corrupted that history a bit, huh? There is a third floor, but it's really only good for sniping. We don't find any loot up here. As we're about to head down, we overhear something. Bill, I have some sewing for you. Look in my room. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Oh, that was a disturbing exchange. Don't know if you heard it, but Hannibal said, Bill, I have some sewing for you. Go to my room. Bill said, sir, yes, sir. Right away, sir. So did Bill escape a life of slavery just to become Hannibal's slave? Something really creepy about that. Well, no time to ponder. Time to get to work. We've got to go to the Museum of History to find an image of the Lincoln Memorial. Thankfully, we've already been to the Museum of History, so we can fast travel there. However, strangely, I found that even though this is an exterior location, we can't fast travel from the Temple of the Union. I had to walk a ways away from the temple before I could fast travel. Arriving at the Museum of History, we get attacked by a super mutant overlord. Geez, thanks for the help there, Willow. Come on, if you're not going to attack super mutants attacking, what is the point of you? Anyway, heading inside, we can pass by Griffin, given his speech about Aquacura, and turn west to enter the Museum of History Lower Halls. We arrive at a lobby level before a ruined statue. We see an upper level above us, but a few doors on this lower level. We'll explore these first. Heading east, we arrive in an office 
Behind the office desk, we find a first aid kit on the wall and an average locked wall safe, which has just over 100 caps and a stealth boy inside. Heading out, we see a plaque near to the statue, but we can't interact with it, so we don't know what the statue was about. Moving south, we arrive in what must have been a museum cafeteria. There are two bathrooms to the west. Heading into the ladies' bathroom, we see a corpse on the ground. It's a wastelander. She has bobby pins, mentats, and psycho on her corpse. Moving to the stalls, we can inspect each of them, but we don't find much. Just as we're about to leave... Yeah! Oh, great. Ghouls. They're gonna sneak up on me this entire video, aren't they? Well, moving out of the ladies' restroom, we can head to the men's. Lots of stalls in here, but nothing in the tanks or any of the toilets. We see three counters with three cash registers, but there's only one we can go behind. Moving east, we can explore these shelves. We find a lot of cutlery, trays, and cups. Then going through a door to the east, we arrive in the kitchen. There's one intact refrigerator with boxed foods inside. There are lots of pots laying around. I tipped over each one, but there was nothing hiding in any of them. We find a first aid kit on a wall and another intact refrigerator with more food inside. Going out an eastern door, we can leave the kitchen. Here we find a hallway. Moving north, we see that it rounds a corner leading back out to the cafeteria. So turning around and moving south down the hallway, we can disarm a bear trap on the ground and turn a corner to find two Nuka-Cola machines. There is the body of a wastelander near to these Nuka-Cola machines, possibly the victim of that bear trap. We find a Nuka-Cola Quantum hiding in a box beneath the table, upon which we find two pieces of jet, some medics, and some sugar bombs, which we can use for Murphy's bombing run. The hallway turns west. We disarm another bear trap, and we can move into yet another kitchen. Again, lots of pots and dishware, nothing of interest. And then we can move north behind the counter. The cash register is empty and nothing of interest on the shelves. Heading back to the hallway, we see that it's a dead end. The path is blocked in with rubble, but we can explore behind the third and final counter. It's yet another kitchen, more cutlery dishes, but nothing of interest here. So, with this path a dead end, that leaves only one path remaining. Retracing our steps all the way out of this cafeteria area, we can move back to the lobby and head up the steps to the top floor. We see two doors in the southern wall, and then doors to the left and right. Moving east first, we find what was at one time a painting gallery, but the paintings have all since crumbled and rotted away. There's nothing in this room. Moving out, we can turn south, this was a statue display, but the statues are all broken. In the southwestern corner, we find a door to the Museum of History offices. Looks like that's where we need to go, but we'll finish exploring up here first. The placards in front of all of these displays are all illegible. We don't find much until we explore the northwesternmost display. Here we find Lincoln's Diary. It appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. We can't read it, consume it, or really do anything with it. Maybe Hamlin would want this. Heading out of this room, we can move west. This caged-off area was protected by a turret at one time, but the turret appears to be gone, and the cage is open, giving us the impression that someone has already looted this room. That's it for this section. So to continue, we can go back into the southern room and open the door to the Museum of History offices. We arrive in another hallway, Moving forward, we find a storage room to the right. Here we find a lot of Abraxo cleaner, nothing much else. Heading out, we can go north up the stairs. At the top of the stairs, we arrive in another long hallway. We see mist on the ground to the west, and it moves around a corner to the east. Uh-oh. Sounds like there are a few more in here. We'll have to keep our eyes open. The room to the right is a snack nook. We can loot Nuka-Cola from a vending machine and some boxed goods and a stim pack from an Etotronic. Across the hall, we have to pick a very hard locked door. Inside, we find a bit of a storage room. Here we ah! Sneaky, sneaky. Getting closer, we see that it's an Action Abe action figure. It's a little Abraham Lincoln statue wielding a sword. This also appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. 
we can't really do anything with it. There are two gun cabinets here with an assault rifle and ammunition. Then we find a bunch of ammo canisters on a shelf to the north, each of which filled with ammunition. There's also a first aid box against the wall and another wall-mounted safe with a stack of caps and pre-war money inside. On a table to the south, we find the turret control system terminal locked with an average lock. After hacking it, we find an option to deactivate or reconfigure the turret and we can either secure or open the archive doors. We'll go ahead and leave these open for now. There's a hole in the wall to the south. This leads to a library. Inspecting each of these shelves, we don't find anything. No pre-war books, nothing. Heading out the door to the west, we arrive back in the hallway, and we see that the gate to the archive is open. But before we explore the archive, we can move west and round a corner to find another supply room. There are a number of metal boxes on the shelves and a couple of desks against the wall. This room opens up to the west to another door to the archive. Before we go into the archive, Golly, doggone ghouls. Before we go into the archive, we'll explore the bathrooms on this level. Lots of stalls, but no real payoff for our exploration. We do find evidence of super mutants in the men's restroom, gore bags on the ground, and a number of human skeletons by the urinals. <gasps> Heading out of the bathroom and moving northeast, we arrive in that hallway with all the steam on the floor. Turning north, we find a big ruined room. It must have been a library, lots of knocked over bookshelves covered in rubble. The floor above has collapsed into this one. We find a couple of desks in the rubble we can loot, and lying amongst the rubble, we find Lincoln's hat. Hey, something we can finally use. Lincoln's hat is an apparel item. It grants plus one to intelligence and plus five to speech. This is one of only two hats in the game that grant bonuses to both intelligence and speech, the other being Button's wig, which we got when I did my video on stealing independence. It has a DR of one and 50 durability. Heading back out to the hallway, we can finish the loop. Sure enough, we find the staircase where we arrived to the left. That means all we have left to explore is the archive room. Heading to the archive room, we can explore behind this desk first. We find some caps in the desk and 10 millimeter ammunition on the desk. Moving into the room, we can kill a ghoul. And another one. We see the turret that we deactivated. Turning around, we can loot all of the boxes and shelves. There's not much over here, but turning around and looking up, we find a Civil War draft poster. It's hard to read, but if we loot it, it appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. Moving around this bookshelf, we find a couple of desks, some microfiche readers. Then moving towards the western wall, we find a John Wilkes Booth wanted poster, framed lying on a shelf. It's nearly a carbon copy of the real wanted poster issued by the War Department in 1865, offering large cash rewards to anyone who apprehended John Wilkes Booth, the assassin, and his accomplices, John H. Surratt and David C. Harold. Against the northwestern wall, we see the other opened gate. This leads to another desk where we find a bunch of booze and more 10 millimeter ammunition on the ground. Behind the desk was a small storage room with a couple of boxes and nothing interesting. But that's it for this ground floor. Heading back to the archives, we can take a staircase to the top floor. And immediately at the top of the stairs, against the northern wall, we see a picture of the Lincoln Memorial. I think Caleb could use that. Oh, come on! Any more? Ah, a glowing one. That's it. Looting the Lincoln Memorial poster, it appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. There's a walkway up here leading to more shelves and boxes, but we don't find any more Lincoln artifacts or anything of interest up here. 
Moving north down the hallway, we see a door to the east, which leads to where we found the poster. And on a desk here, we find Lincoln's voice, which appears to be a wax recording of Lincoln's voice. It appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. This find has interesting implications for the Fallout universe, as in our universe, Lincoln died 12 years before Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. So there was no technology capable of recording his voice when he was alive. It appears that's not the case in the Fallout universe. Moving east, we arrive at a hallway. Going north down the hallway, we can move into an eastern room. Here we find another library and a desk. And on one of the shelves here, we find an antique Lincoln coin collection. A box of coins, which also appears in the miscellaneous section of our inventory. Out of this room, and continuing north down the hallway, we can turn right into another ruined library, but this room is empty. Back to the hallway, it wraps around a corner and continues to the west. Here we can move south into the big room where we killed the glowing one. We find a number of cubicles and the corpse of a raider on the ground. On a desk near to this raider, we find a copy of Chinese Army Special Ops Training Manual. And in a glass display case next to the training manual is Lincoln's Repeater. This, like the hat, is a usable item. Lincoln's Repeater is the most powerful ballistic rifle in the game, dealing 50 damage. That's five more than the backwater rifle we get from the Point Lookout DLC, and 10 more than the Lever Action Rifle. It's a whopping 20 more than the most powerful rifle in the vanilla game, Old Painless. It can deal 0.75 attacks per second, which is a bit less than that of Old Painless, which is a very fast weapon. It can attack 1.13 times per second. Despite this, Lincoln's Repeater still has a higher DPS of 37.5, compared to Old Painless's 33.8. However, its critical chance multiplier is less than that of the Point Lookout Lever Action Rifles, only two compared to five. Despite this, it still has the highest critical damage, 50 compared to the Backwater Rifles, 45. And it has a pretty low action point cost, 25 compared to the Backwater Rifles, 30, and Old Painless's 23, giving it the highest damage per action point, two compared to the Backwater Rifles, 1.5. It also has the highest ammo capacity of any rifle, 15, compared to the Backwater Rifle and Lever Action Rifles, 10. But the really unique thing about this weapon is it has a weapon spread of zero, which gives us pinpoint accuracy with this thing. That's the same spread as Old Painless, but it's a significant improvement compared to the Lever Action Rifle, which has a weapon spread of 0.25. In this room, we can loot the desks and containers for ammo. We find a first aid kit against the eastern wall. Then, heading back out into the hallway, we find one more room to the northwest. This was the room that had partially collapsed into the room below where we found Lincoln's hat. All we get for exploring this room is access to one ammunition canister in the back of the room. Back in the hallway and moving west, we can round a corner to find one more large library. But aside from one desk and a couple of boxes, it's empty. Though in one of the boxes, we do find a pre-war book. That's 100 caps from Scribe Yearling. With the final room on this level being completely empty, that's it for the Museum of History. We got what we came for. We found the photograph of the Lincoln Memorial, which Caleb needs to restore the statue, and we walked away with a bunch of Lincoln artifacts. Now we need to travel to the Lincoln Memorial and make sure it's free of super mutant occupation so that the former slaves can move in safely. The Lincoln Memorial is really close to the Museum of History. Heading out the front door, we turn west and pass the Washington Monument on the left. Soon, we see the Lincoln Memorial off in the distance. Directly before it is the reflecting pool. But 200 years later, it's highly radioactive. Don't think we'll wade in this water. Trying to walk around it, however, we find frag mines lining the ground. As we approach the Lincoln Memorial, we see the super mutants here are already dead. What? I don't remember killing these. Moving closer, we see that there are people already here. That's close enough. What the hell are you doing wandering around here? Oh, my mistake. I'll just be going. Smart move. We shoot anyone that tries to get into the memorial. I want something to drink. 
kill and steal. Not necessarily in that order. <laughs> Don't we all? Let's go see Mr. Walker. He's in charge of the killing around here. And stay away from the memorial. We have orders to shoot first and loot the bodies after. Easy now. I'm just curious about this place. I'm not looking for trouble. Curiosity can get a wastelander killed. I'm going to let you through, but you'll have to talk to Mr. Walker first. Follow me. Oh, and stay off the memorial steps. They have orders to shoot anyone that gets too close. The dirt path is safe. What are these guys? Raiders? Usually raiders shoot first. Moving forward, Silas stops before the stairs to the Lincoln Memorial. We see sandbag barricades and armed men at the top of the stairs. That's close enough. The memorial is, the memorial off, is off limits. Okay, well, instead of heading up the stairs, we'll follow Silas here. He leads us around a corner and move towards a door beneath the Lincoln Memorial. This brings us to the Memorial Maintenance Room. In the maintenance room, we find some pre-war Lincoln Memorial placards. Abraham Lincoln, 16th President. Lincoln warned the South in his inaugural address, in your hands, my dissatisfied fellow countrymen, and not in mine, is the momentous issue of civil war. The government will not assail you. You have no oath registered in heaven to destroy the government, while I shall have the most solemn one to preserve, protect, and defend it. Silas brings us to a man leaning against a wall, Leroy Walker. I'm Leroy Walker, and you're probably wondering about what we're doing here. Nope. Not really. I think I'll just be on my way. Not until I say so. I've got a few questions you're going to have to answer first. Looks to me like you're getting ready for war. What are you really doing here? You're a sharp one. Who are you guys? We're from Paradise Falls. We're looking for escaped slaves. Have you seen any? Oh, they're slavers. If I had seen slaves, I wouldn't tell you. You are really starting to piss me off. Lucky for you, I don't have time to give you an attitude adjustment. Just answer one question and you can go. What do you know about the Temple of the Union? We could pass a speech check to say, I've got no beef with you, let me go, and I won't say a word. I really shouldn't, but I'll take you at your word. If I ever see you around here again, I'll shoot first and loot your body afterward. Now get. Or we can say... So I'm a prisoner? I don't think so. Then I'm just going to have to kill you. Now there are no calls for that. Fire. And Lincoln's repeater, after 200 years, fells more slavers. But assuming we don't want to take them out just yet, we can continue to talk with them by saying, I haven't seen any slaves recently. That's too bad. Temple of the Union, you say? Never heard of it. Is it some ruin around here? Not exactly. That means you aren't much of a threat to us, so let me tell you a bit more. We're setting up a base to excavate these ruins. We're looking for anything related to Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln, huh? Never heard of him. If I find anything, though, I'll be sure to show it to you. I'm glad to see we understand each other. My sources say the old Museum of History might have some, but I can't spare anyone to go look. Just make sure I get first crack at anything you find. So, if I find anything like that, you'll buy it from me? I like the way your mind works. Tell you what. I can't spare anyone to go poking in the old museum. If you find anything in there, I'll buy it off you. I've got a lot going on right now. Maybe later. I'll keep the offer open. If you don't do it, someone else will. Hell, I'll do it if I have to. One more thing. Stay out of the memorial. My men will shoot anyone that gets too close. You want the artifacts? Go get them yourself then. I'd love to. Can't spare the men. You, on the other hand, are expendable, especially with an attitude like that. Let's just leave this as an open offer. If I never see you again, I haven't lost anything. Okay. Where is this ruin? It's a museum, just past the Washington Monument. I'm only interested in stuff related to Abraham Lincoln. 
Bring me back whatever you find. Oh, and don't try to go into the memorial. The guards have orders to shoot on sight. Well, lucky for him, we just looted that place. We have the artifacts in our inventory. But first we can ask him, why are you so interested in Lincoln artifacts? Slaves all over the wasteland have started talking about Lincoln and his great war to free the slaves. We can't have them thinking they deserve to be free. So I'm burning everything I can find related to this Abe Lincoln. And at this point, if we want to, we can start to pawn our artifacts. What will you give me for this toy of Lincoln? I suppose I could give you ten caps. It's not very inspiring, is it? He has the same response for the bottom two options for each item we can sell him. If we say, I'd rather keep it. Don't you dare let any slaves get wind of it. It'll give them ideas about running. Or if we say, it's a deal. I'll get this burned right away. Or we can pass a speech check to barter for a better price. You want the toy? Not for that price. I want more. I suppose I can afford it. I'll get this burned right away. How much for this war poster? Those damn abolitionists would use this against us. I'll give you 50 caps. You won't get a better price anywhere else. This poster is worth more than that. Sure, why not? We'll burn it tonight. Are you interested in Lincoln's hat? Such strange clothing. We may never truly understand Lincoln and his times. It's worth 25 caps to me. For Lincoln's own hat? Come on, you can do better than that. All right, you goddamn merc. You know I can't afford to let this fall into the wrong hands. I'll toss this one in the fire myself. I found Lincoln's diary. This is truly a dangerous book. I'll pay 75 caps for it. Not enough. Make me a better offer. <laughs> You're going to bleed me dry at this rate. You've got a deal. I'm going to burn it one page at a time. I have a collection of pennies with Lincoln's face on them. Not exactly something that will rally slaves, eh? I'll give you 15 caps for it. You'll have to do better than that. Sure. Why not? Hmm. Can't burn pennies. I'll have to toss them into the Potomac. How much will you pay me for this poster of the Lincoln Memorial? I wouldn't want abolitionists to find this. How about 100 caps? You know nobody else will buy it. In your dreams, it's worth twice that. You're a greedy one. Okay, you have a deal. I'll enjoy burning this. Are you interested in buying a recording of Lincoln's voice? Yeah, I might be interested. How does 50 caps sound? That price is an insult. You can do better. Okay, okay. I'll meet your terms. Just give me the recording. I'm going to smash it to pieces and then burn it. Would you like to make an offer on Lincoln's rifle? His rifle, you say? Yes, I am interested. Damn, this thing looks like crap. I'll give you 100 caps for it. You're kidding, right? It's worth twice that. All right, all right. I'll pay it. It's a shame I have to destroy this. It's a fine weapon. I've got a wanted poster for Lincoln's assassin. Nice. I'll give you 75 caps for it. No way. I need a lot more than that. It's always about the extra caps with you, isn't it? Here, take your pay. This will burn nicely tonight. Now the first time we pass a speech check to get a better price, he offers us another deal. All right, you greedy bastard. I'll get someone to burn this. You seem like a right-thinking person. I've got a proposition for you. I'm looking for some escaped slaves. I'll pay 100 caps for information about their leader, Hannibal Hamlin. Interested? I don't hunt runaway slaves. I don't like your tone much. I'll overlook it for now, since you brought me that item. If you find any more Lincoln artifacts, bring them to me. If you know what's good for you, you'll tell me if you run into a runaway slave named Hannibal. How about I just kill them all? That's tempting, but no. Hannibal is a runaway. His owner wants him back. Just let me know if you find him and I'll take care of the rest. If I find them, you'll be the first to know. Perfect. Don't go trying to kill them or capture them yourself. I'll take care of that. Oh, and stay out of the memorial. My men have standing orders to shoot anyone that gets too close. Or we can turn him in. 
I've found Hannibal Hamlin. Bravo. I guess I owe you some caps. I'll gather up the boys and we'll go collect him. You can meet us there if you want. So, can I take a peek at the memorial now? Sure. Silas will tell them you're allowed up there. With that, Leroy Walker and Silas race out the door. They run to the front of the Lincoln Memorial, whereupon they meet up with the other slavers, and then they race off to the Temple of the Union. Now, he invited us to join him, but he didn't really seem to care one way or the other. If we follow him, he takes us on a very long journey through the metro tunnels and across the wasteland. But this is a really annoying trip, because not only is their AI horrible, causing them to run straight into walls, have a hard time getting past obstacles, sometimes even running around in circles, but they run through areas that are rife with enemies. We have to fight raiders, super mutants, centaurs, enclave, and depending on the player's level, these enemies may be so powerful that they can kill the slavers in one or two shots, making it so that the slavers never even reach the Temple of the Union. So instead of following them, it's a better idea to fast travel to the Temple of the Union. But the problem with this is we beat them here, so we're stuck waiting until they arrive. I found that waiting 24 hours is usually enough time. If we do, we find them gathered just west outside the Temple of the Union. We are just about to wipe out this Temple of the Union. You can join us or not, it makes no difference to me. You'd fetch a pretty penny. And with that, the slavers assault the Temple of the Union. Despite Leroy telling us earlier that he wanted Hamlin left alive, he actually kills Hannibal Hamlin, and we get no penalty for killing him ourselves. We also don't gain anything by siding with the slavers. When we next talk to Leroy... Yeah? Uh, I have to go now. Yeah, see you. And that's it. After wiping out the escaped slaves, the slavers return to Paradise Falls, seemingly unaware that I cleared this place earlier, killing hey. all of the slavers hey there. here. They're just here to drink. Bye. Or, instead of working with and siding with the slavers, we can kill them. If we previously sold our Lincoln artifacts to Leroy here, the only one we can loot back from his body is the Lincoln Memorial poster, which is the quest item we needed to give to Caleb. So unless we really need the cash, it's a better idea to keep them and not sell them to Leroy. With Leroy and Silas dead, we now have to clear the memorial. Instead of going up the front steps, we can creep around behind the memorial. If we do, we have to disarm a number of frag mines back here. But at the back of the memorial, we find an earthen ramp, which we can use to climb up to it. Here, we find a number of holes in the walls. One is booby-trapped with a tripwire, connected to an iron girder trap, and it's guarded. I didn't want to get caught, so backing out, we can move around the side to find another hole in the wall with yet another tripwire. This one's connected to a fragmentation bouquet. Creeping inside the memorial, we can move to the steps where we see the slavers behind their sandbag barricades. And from here, we can pick them off. That zero weapon spread on this thing is amazing. With these slavers out front dead, we can head up the steps and take a look at this memorial. The head, sure enough, is indeed gone. But just then, the wonders of Robco technology pick up some movement behind the memorial. Creeping forward, looks like there were a few we missed. And then one more to the southeast.
When all the slavers are dead, our quest log updates. Talk to Hannibal Hamlin. Back inside the memorial, we see two inscriptions. Against the southern wall is an inscription we are all familiar with, starting with four score and seven years ago. This is, of course, a copy of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address from November 19th, 1863. This is where the dog at the Temple of the Union, Fourscore, got his name. Turning around and examining the northern wall, we find a copy of President Lincoln's second inaugural address from 1865. The text we read on the placard inside the maintenance room came from his first inaugural address. Heading back to the Temple of the Union, now that we have a key, we can open up the front door. Then we can tell Caleb that we found a photograph. You have a picture, and such a large one too. I'll have no problems restoring the memorial with this. Thank you. After turning it into him, we can move upstairs and tell Hamlin that the memorial is now safe. Everything is done? I can hardly believe it. We are finally gonna realize the dream. We'll start out within the hour. We'll meet you at the site. Like with the slavers, fast traveling to meet these guys can be frustrating. We arrive faster than they do. So after fast traveling, we have to wait 24 hours or so for them to show up. Then when they do show up, they don't appear right outside the memorial. Instead, they appear right outside the nearby metro tunnel. You have been good to your word. You are welcome at the Temple of the Union anytime. Take these schematics as a token of our gratitude. With that, we complete the quest Head of State, we gain Karma, and he gives us a schematic for the dart gun. And now that the quest is complete, we can ask him if he's interested in buying our Lincoln artifacts. Hey Hamlin, what will you give me for this toy of Lincoln? It's a small thing, but I'll give you ten caps for it. Not for that price. I want more. You take when we have so little. So be it. We will enshrine this right away. I've got this old war poster from Lincoln's Civil War. Wanna buy it? The words of the great Lincoln, calling his people to war. I can spare 75 caps for it. This poster is worth more than that. Deal. We'll find a good place to hang this. I found one of Lincoln's old hats. Care to buy it? What a ridiculous hat. I'll pay you 25 caps for it. For Lincoln's own hat? Come on, you can do better than that. You take when we have so little. So be it. We will enshrine this right away. <laughs> and with that, he puts it on. I gotta say, he looks good in it. Hey, Hamlin, I've got Lincoln's diary. I might be willing to sell it. The words of the great man himself? In his own handwriting? I'll pay a hundred caps for it. Not enough. Make me a better offer. I suppose I can afford that. I have a collection of pennies with Lincoln's face on them. I suppose these have some small value to the faithful. I'll give you 15 caps for it. You'll have to do better than that. It's not so much more. You have a deal. Are you interested in buying a recording of Lincoln's voice? His real voice? How is that possible? I must have it. I'll give you 50 caps for it. That price is an insult. You can do better. You're right. Here, take your pay. Imagine, Lincoln's own voice. What a treasure. Would you like to make an offer on Lincoln's rifle? His actual rifle? Such a priceless artifact. You must let me have it. I'll give you 150 caps for it. You're kidding, right? It's worth twice that. You're right. I shouldn't quibble over a few extra caps. We will carry this into war against the slavers. I've got a wanted poster for Lincoln's assassin. To think that even the great Lincoln was felled by an assassin. This is a reminder to all that we must remain vigilant. I would like to buy it from you for 50 caps. No way. I need a lot more than that. It's worth it. We'll hang this where everyone can see it. With that, we sell all our artifacts. I need to be going. Bye. Hamlin and the escaped slaves race towards the memorial, but it takes another 24 hours for them to fully occupy it. If we come back later, 24 hours hey. or so, we find Great them inside. Caleb has restored Lincoln's head to the statue, and we see that he finished inscribing that plaque that he was working on. In this temple, as in the hearts of the people, for whom he saved the Union, the memory of Abraham Lincoln is enshrined forever. We find Caleb Smith dismantling the booby traps. Thanks to you, we're rebuilding the memorial. And Hannibal Hamlin, wearing his fancy hat, is sitting at a nearby table. Our abolitionist hero. 
Life is much better for us here than it was in the wasteland. We're better armed and better fed. Stepping out front, we find their Brahmin here. And on the southern side, we find four score and three new tents. The first tent is a refugee tent, a place for any new escaped slaves. Here we find food, drink, and some clean, dry beds. Moving to the two other tents, one is for Simone, but there are bunk beds in here. Looks like it can sleep four people, so it must not just be for Simone. There's a new Coca-Cola on a table, and none of this stuff is set to owned, so we can take as much as we want. The final tent is Caleb's tent, and here we also find four beds. None of these items are set to owned either, so we can finally loot the teddy bear without stealing. Moving into the maintenance room, we see they've cleaned up the bodies of Leroy and Silas, but otherwise they haven't touched this place. It seems to not be used by them. Then, if we arrive at the temple at around 2 o'clock p.m., we'll find Hannibal Hamlin rallying his followers by repeating the Gettysburg Address. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that this nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hallow this ground. The brave men living and dead who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us the living, rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion, that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Looks like all it took was a giant engraving for him to get his facts right this time. But what we don't notice is any of the artifacts we sold him on display, which was really frustrating to me. So instead of selling them to Hamlin, we can try to find a new buyer. And who would be more interested in these artifacts than none other but Abraham Washington, curator of the Capital Preservation Society, operating out of Rivet City. The last time we saw him, we sold him a bunch of artifacts during the quest Stealing Independence, including the Declaration of Independence, which I covered in a video yes? that you can watch here. What brings you by Rivet City today? How's the museum business? Oh, it treats me well. I'm sure it will be even better now that we have the Declaration of Independence. Hopefully we can add more to the collection and increase our foot traffic. Is the museum looking to acquire anything else? Well, yes. Any document of historical significance would be a benefit to the society. However, I am also interested in branching out. Perhaps some interesting artifacts related to our great country's history. Be sure and bring me anything you find along those lines. I'd be happy to compensate you once again. What will you give me for this toy of Lincoln? Quite a nice specimen you have there. How about I give you ten caps for it? Not for that price. I want more. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. How much for this war poster? That would look fantastic on the museum wall. What do you say to 60 caps? And strangely enough, we don't find a barter option here. Uh, you got a deal. Here you go. Thanks much. Are you interested in Lincoln's hat? Lincoln's actual hat? Amazing. I must have it for the museum. How does 70 caps sound? For Lincoln's own hat? Come on, you can do better than that. Very well. Here you are, worth every cap. And he doesn't put it on. I found Lincoln's diary. Oh my goodness. Handwritten by one of the greatest presidents of our country? The society must possess this. 
I'll give you 100 caps for it. Not enough. Make me a better offer. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. Wow, everything is worth every cap to him. I have a collection of pennies with Lincoln's face on them. Pennies, eh? That's the old money they used long ago. Well, any artifact from American history would benefit the museum. How about 15 caps for the lot of them? Make it 30 and you've got a deal. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. Worth every cap, yeah, I'm sure. Are you interested in buying a recording of Lincoln's voice? An actual recording of Lincoln's voice? Amazing! Please, allow me to compensate you for it. I'll pay you 60 caps. Make it 120 and you've got a deal. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. <laughs> this guy. Would you like to make an offer on Lincoln's rifle? I can't believe you have that artifact in your possession. What an amazing addition it would make to the museum. I will buy it from you for 100 caps. What do you say? Make it 200 and you got a deal. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. I've got a wanted poster for Lincoln's assassin. Interesting. I'd love to have that in the museum's collection. I will buy it from you for 70 caps. What do you say? Make it 140 and you've got a deal. Very well. Here you are. Worth every cap. Worth every cap. I got to go now. Well, I suppose that's goodbye then. Come again anytime. Each of the three people we can sell these artifacts to offer a different price. So if we're trying to maximize our money, we should sell the right item to the right buyer. Assuming we pass the speech or barter check every time, the most money we can make from this transaction breaks down like this. Hamlin pays 300 for the repeater and 150 for the Civil War draft poster. Leroy Walker pays 150 for the John Wilkes Booth Wanted poster and 200 for the Lincoln Memorial poster. Abraham Washington pays 140 for Lincoln's hat and 120 for Lincoln's voice. All three of them pay the same price for the action figure, 20 caps, and for the coin collection, 30 caps. And both Hannibal Hamlin and Abraham Washington pay the same price for Lincoln's diary, 200 caps. If we maximize our profit margin hey with each of these buyers, we can walk away with 1,310 caps if we sell the entire collection. But frustratingly, not okay even here. Abraham Washington puts any of these items on display. Even waiting days, weeks later, and coming back, we don't find anything. And it's hey, not on his inventory, careful. they just disappear from the game. What brings you so by unless the, the money today? is really important to your character at that point, I don't think selling these items is worth it at all. I'll tell you what I did. I kept Lincoln's repeater for myself because it's just an amazing rifle and it's so much fun to use. Then I sold Lincoln's hat to Hannibal hey. Hamlin. I know it's a one of a kind item in the game, but I just love the fact that Hannibal wears it while repeating the Gettysburg Address every day at the Lincoln Memorial. Then I took all the rest of the artifacts back to my player home, where I put them proudly on display. I suppose if any Wastelander is interested, they're welcome to come on by and check them out. And that is the full story of the Temple of the Union and the final quest in Fallout 3 that I had yet to cover. What are your thoughts on Head of State? Did you find all of the artifacts inside the Museum of History? How did you use Lincoln's repeater and his hat? Let me know in the comments section below. I publish many videos each and every week on my channel, so if you don't want to miss the next one, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on YouTube notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I've got a brand new shirt in the shop. I've been to Project Purity. Confound your friends and family who recognize the Jefferson Memorial, but have no idea what Project Purity is. This design comes on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. You can find it on other products as well, like smartphone cases, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here.
If you like what I do here on my channel and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. YouTube members gain access to membership badges that appear next to their names in the comments section of my videos, and they can use ox emojis during the live chats of my live streams here on YouTube. Patreon subscribers gain access to exclusive channels on my Discord server. But more importantly, I'm just glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.